that unsatisfying feeling when you poop halfway and then you gotta run for call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then you gotta yeah. just <laughs> pack and go. Yeah, this yeah. is our professionalism. Hi, I'm Hidayah and I'm a paramedic from SCDF. I've been in the force for five years. Hello everyone, my name is Benjamin and I'm from Bukit Batuk Fire Station. I'm also a paramedic in SCDF and I've been in the force for about three years. What that means to you today? My journey as a paramedic started off uh, when I first went to ITE. So I did higher NITEC in uh, like paramedic and emergency care. We had our on-job training or our attachments in the civil defence force. And it's true there that uh, via all the attachments that I decided that being a paramedic is a relatively fun job and you don't get to see things that uh, are very common in yeah. like the daily lives of it's Singaporeans. It's not a routine, right? Correct. For me, it's more of a personal choice. So there was this one day where actually my late grandfather used to stay with me at home. So he has a history of heart problems. Lah. So one day he collapsed actually, unfortunately at home. And I felt helpless because I didn't know what to do. So I remember that feeling. I vowed to myself never to repeat that feeling. So unfortunately, my dad, uh, my granddad passed away. But today, I felt happy lah because even if I couldn't save him, there are many others that I could save, you know. All right, guys, today we are going to be sharing our experiences and um, also why we decided to become paramedics. Paper stone, paper stone. Okay, see you. Scissors, paper, paper stone. stone. <laughs> <laughs> What's the reality of your job? Um, for example, being underappreciated or is it tougher than it looks? Sometimes I do feel that we are slightly, okay, slightly <laughs> underappreciated because most of the work we do are back end, like we don't really get spotted by yes. like members of public doing okay. what we do. For us paramedics, we are usually on scene for just like 15 to 20 minutes. So they don't really hear about us. They don't have the faith in us. We actually are equipped with the medical knowledge similar to what um, pre-hospital care doctors have. But it's just that because the society is not aware of this, they don't trust us to handle their sickly family members. So in turn, they treat us as just a public service that is free. Okay, there are definitely moments where we do feel uh, appreciated, especially usually it happens when we convey, like for example, a patient to the hospital and then their loved ones or their family members actually come to thank you after the call. It's all these um, small little words of mm. like gratitude. Yes. What's the most memorable case you have ever taken on? <laughs> <laughs> it's a case of locked door actually. So what happened was um, this patient was actually unconscious on the floor. He was lying down in a pool of um, some fluid and that fluid was actually his uh, own bodily fluids. The patient fell down, fractured his legs and arms so he, he couldn't get up for 11 days. So the way he survived was actually through um, consuming his own bodily fluids. And the thing is he was face down so there was this thing called necrosis on the cheek. So when we turned the patient around, there was a huge gaping hole on the cheek. So that was yeah. the one and only time that I attended to that kind of call, but most memorable. Lah. And I think, uh, unfortunately for us paramedics or the people in EMS, the more memorable calls are usually the more gruesome ones. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. yes, correct. There are certain type of calls where we attend to that are slightly harder to get over. I ever attended to a cardiac arrest case. This lady's husband was basically unconscious, no pulse, no breathing at the point of time. How it hit me is when we were doing uh, our resuscitative efforts, she started crying saying like, don't leave me, what's going to happen to our baby? So that was when I realised she's actually um, pregnant at the point of time. And I feel usually how we get over this kind of calls is uh, mainly you know, just talking to colleagues or friends yeah. about it. Yeah, I, I must say, uh, if you are in EMS, we have dark humour. <laughs> really, really dark humour, right? I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> oh! Hey! Lucky! Candy! <laughs> Later. <laughs> How do you deal with people who call for non-emergency cases? 
we wrap. Is if it's no Annette? emergency, <laughs> so then they're alive. Is it Annette Lee? Call 1-777-995. Yeah. You have no like idea how many times I wanted <laughs> to just take out my phone and tell them, have you not seen this video? Yeah. <laughs> no, but okay, for real, for real now. The society sometimes don't have confidence in us and our expertise. So they will insist on going to the hospital. So what we do is actually uh, tell them that, sure, we can bring you, no problem. But of course, there are costs incurred. Lah. To tell you the truth, ambulances are not free if it's not emergency, okay? Okay? <laughs> so, um, be prepared to spend at least, uh, I think, 200 plus. Three, 300 plus. So, if let's say you have a non-emergency case, call Grab. Lah. But if let's say condition worsens, then just call 995 again. Lah. We are not going to refuse you. Hmm. <gasps> I am so strong. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. Tell us something you wish the public knew about your job as a paramedic. Uh, please don't like mistake us for just like a transportation service. We definitely deal with a lot of like life and death situations. Like we come to help you when you need us. Yes, definitely. And we will try our best to help you. Sometimes there's despite our efforts, there's really no way we can save your loved ones. When you're at scene, sometimes the family members might um, like back you. They might shout at you to try to save their loved ones but uh, we understand that it's probably due to like uh, like denial or mm. shock but like there's only so much we can try to do there's a limit um, yes and unfortunately sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't go the way out. we yeah. want it to be yeah yeah so emo sir yeah. <laughs> hey it is what it is <laughs> see one moment we emo one moment we laughing so was there ever a time you had to maintain professionalism despite being in a difficult situation. For myself, I've ever been... Punched, is it? Like, slapped by a drunk, <laughs> drunk patient. Imagine somebody yeah. slapping you and you're still smiling. That's us. <laughs> yeah, that's us. But on the flip side, I mean, it just occurred to me like, mm -hmm. if we have a stomach ache, right? <laughs> and then we have to go attend a call. So we just like, suck it up and go, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know that, yeah. that unsatisfying feeling when you poop halfway and then you gotta run for call? <laughs> yeah, then yeah, you gotta yeah. just... Pack and go. Yeah, this yeah. is our professionalism. I mean, if you cannot hold it in and then the patient is stable, then okay lah, like, auntie, sorry, can I borrow your toilet? <laughs> Pai stay ah. yeah. <laughs> So sometimes when we attend to calls, you know, there might be like fecal matter involved or <laughs> involved? patients might might be vomiting. So, you know how yeah, you have yeah, like yeah. gag reflex when you see someone puke yes, and then you also yes. want to puke? I've had one NSF who had this gag reflex problem. So when you saw the patient puking, he, he also, also had to puke. What is this? Hey, you're setting me up here. <laughs> we enact how you would deal with a difficult person. Drunk ah. Oh no, PTSD, PTSD. Hmm. Yeah, I drink. Uh, hi ma'am, so I um, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the family from SDF. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know where you are. I want my boyfriend. Okay, uh, your boyfriend's not here right now. You're doing your sleeps now. Hello. Okay, uh, may I know what happened to you? Do you want to share? I just been really bad, okay? I don't call you when you come here. Okay, I, I think somebody saw you uh, no. crying alone. That's why they were worried. Ah, okay, 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 you see there. <laughs> Paramedics are like nurses, mostly females. <laughs> Benjamin. <laughs> Definitely not all. But not, not a all. lot of females. I think it's a good mix between yeah. uh, male and female paramedics. So I think sometimes um, the good thing about like the bad thing actually about being a female is also like sexual harassment. Unfortunately, yes. so it does yep, happen yep, yep. because does um, happen. when patients are like drunk or perhaps they have a medical condition that causes them to be a bit of um, unsound mind, they tend they might get a bit. Uh, inappropriate or touchy at times. In the event that it happens, if the patient is of sound mind, we will usually warn them. But if let's say, especially like he said, uh, drunk patients, sometimes they are more uh, forward, you know, and they are trying to be funny, which is not funny at all. We do call the police actually for assistance. So sometimes because of these kind of cases, the police officers follow us in the ambulance. Yeah. I scared to break again already. <laughs> <laughs> an ambulance has no maximum speed limit when it comes to an emergency. We do still have to follow the speed limit if it's uh, like not an emergency call, but if it's an emergency call, we are allowed to yeah, go allowed up to 20, 20 km, km above power. speed limit. Yeah. We don't drive the ambulance like GTA. La. That's, that's, or maybe that's we right. do. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah, fun fact. We actually, our new ambulances have this thing called the Rumblers. We have the power to make the front vehicle vibrate. 
Okay, we also have like loudspeakers in the ambulance. So I would like read out the license plate number like SKW, please move out of the way. You know, and then sometimes they just don't get it. So like, okay, I'll just do the rumbler. So the car in front will like So then they will realize that there's really an ambulance behind it. And we are really like tailgating really. Then they will move. That's fast. So what keeps you going at your job? The satisfaction you get when you help like actual people who are in need. You know, so when they thank you, or sometimes even like though they don't thank you, like you have patients who are unconscious, but you know that once you convey them to the hospital, when you have done your interventions, they turned out to be in a better situation when you found them. Uh, I think these are the little things like in our job that makes us feel yeah. a sense of uh, satisfaction. Additionally, I think what keeps me in the job is um, friends. My friends at work is like family. It's unlike my other working experiences. It's the feeling where I know if anything happens to me, I have friends to back me up. And it really drives home in a sense where if literally I'm dying, <laughs> my friends will be there and I can trust them, my life literally in their hands. Yeah, and sometimes we even have like members of public who see us in the ambulance and then they'll just wave yeah. to us. Like, kids, uh, kids, like, right? Yeah, kids. kids. Oh, it's, it's actually quite fun. It wasn't as... Um, Stressful as I thought it would be. Yeah, but uh, at the start I was quite nervous because I didn't know what questions were going to come up. Thank you for watching For Real For Real. And if you guys want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye bye.